Good day and welcome to this week's episode of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rondell Dono, attorney at law. Once again, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to bring the law and you in its simplest form. Now, this week we are speaking about responsible journalism. What is responsible journalism um, as opposed to sensationalized um, reporting? Now, of course, sometimes we... The, uh, the, the media houses uh, make defenses such as public interest, but whether whether that borderlines are uh, slandered or, or rather libel rather, and, and whether that constitutes whatever they report, whether it is factual or unfactual, whether that constitutes um, a breach of, of privacy, um, defamation, and all these various things that, that persons, whether in the public domain, um, has to battle with, with the media houses. And today I have my guest once again, Mr. Farai Hoof, Masai Sai, attorney at law of Hooves and Associates. Um, he's no stranger to strictly legal set. And I'm happy once again to bring Mr. Sai, Mr. Masai Sai here to speak about the topic of responsible journalism as it pertains uh, to defamation and publication of untruth statements and reports. Uh, so once again, I'll introduce Mr. Farai Hoof, Masai Sai. Good morning, Farai. Good morning, Mr. Donawa. Good morning to your listeners, and thank you very much for having me on your show yet again. Yes, yet again, <laughs> yet again. I have to call you the seasoned, the seasoned <laughs> guest by now. This is your, your third appearance on Strictly Legal. And, um, and once again, um, I'm happy for you to be here. And of course, this year we have our um, new feature where we would have our call-in segment where you can call and give your comments or ask your question. The numbers are 623-9376 or 622-9338. So we would have that call-in segment closer to the end of, the seg of, this, uh, of this episode. Uh, so let's go to... Uh, the reason why we're here, uh, Farai, um, is dealing with what is responsible journalism. But in the context of a recent matter that would have, um, that you would have uh, been uh, counsel to, um, in rather, um, mm -hmm. with respect to uh, a politician. Indeed. Right, so, so, so t tell us more about that particular matter. Okay, so I, I know your show is always on the cutting edge yes. and being commercially aware of what is going on in the legal fraternity. So it, it was indeed a pleasure for me to... Um, to, to speak to you and to your listeners with regards to um, responsible journalism. And this is placed in the context of um, the cause of action of defamation. All right, and, and the particular case, um, the, it's public awareness, uh, the public should be aware of it. It's the minister Adrian Leons and his wife against the Guardian Media House and a reporter by the name of Renuka Singh. Now, I remember that yes. was a big issue with respect to yes. something to do with domestic violence, etc. Yes, uh, yes, so they, they would have run a story which would have, by innuendo, um, suggested that the Honorable Minister was abusive to his wife. Um, naturally, the Honorable Minister, being the Honorable Man that he is, had to defend his name, his good name. And likewise, his wife, with regards to her privacy and her uh, being admitted to hospital and so forth. Um, so yes, so they brought the matter to court and the matter was decided in December of 2021 in their favor. So they, had, they were vindicated. But the defense raised by the media house and the reporter was one of um, Reynolds' privilege. So Reynolds' privilege is named after a case of Re Reynolds. Yes. All right. And um, the privilege that they raised, which is a defense to um, defamation is that um, they had exercised what you call responsible journalism. Um, so the court went in to say what is responsible journalism. So really responsible journalism, it, it, it requires the journalists to naturally act responsibly. But then, um, but then, of course, what is responsible journalism? Because yeah. now uh, media houses are, are, are saying that, you know, the, the government or let's say persons in high authority are trying to stymie their yes. reporting and that they have a duty to the public. Indeed. And therefore, how do we balance that, um, that duty? Yes, so the, the, there is the freedom of the press. Freedom of the press is a constitutional right, um, but it is not a unfettered right. So there is, there, you have to balance that right to press freedom with the right to the person, to their privacy, to their, 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 right, their right to their good name. You know? So therefore, um, that is the balance that a judicial officer has to strike. Um, one of the things that the, the judge would have said, and I could read it verbatim, um, it was stated at paragraph 52 of his judgment. And he said that, that not everything in which members of the public may have an interesting necessarily satisfies the public interest aspect of the defense. 
the public may well be interested in issues and situations which may be entertaining, salacious, but which are devoid of any element of national significance. So basically, yes, we have a public that have a, a, a good appetite for the picong and the bacchanal, um, but that does not satisfy the test of public interest. Public interest really means something that the public officer, normally someone who is a holding public office, like a minister, is doing in the interest of the public. So it's not, it doesn't have to do with his private life, and certainly it does not have to do with anything that is not job-related, so to speak. So it's you publicizing that um, the minister may be on a beach with somebody that is not his wife and that sort of thing is not, will not satisfy the public interest element. But, but, but if you publicize that the minister is misappropriating funds, and that is meant to be true, because the, the bigger the allegation, the, the more truthful you have to be to justify the publication. But then, there, but then there, there are arguments in terms of uh, persons, I mean, which I, I'm sure the, the media house would have stated, was that at the end of the day, the minister or any person who is in government is a public figure. And therefore, being a public figure, you are, you are subject to scrutiny, whether it is in a private life or a public life. Yes. Let's say, for instance, an allegation of some sort of domestic violence is true. Yes. Right? How does the public deal with it and how, yes. how does the authority in terms of the Prime Minister deal with, with, with a minister or member of parliament abusing their wife? Yes. So the, in that context, then the, the media house has to find out the truth to it. So naturally, media houses do not disclose their sources. And that is, that is founded in well-founded law. You don't have to disclose your source, but you have to check that your source is credible. So you, obviously we would have cross-examined the media personality, or the reporter on her source, not asking who the source was, but the credibility of the information. So when you get information, you have to wait, you have to test it, you have to check the veracity of it. So if it is that someone has brought you information that someone has domestically abused their spouse and that person is a person of public office, then you must do your research as a responsible journalist to verify that that information is in fact true before um, publishing. And the simplest form of research would be interview the parties that you have the allegation against. If you fail to, to pass that test, then you fail the, the public interest test. You are just interested in back and all. Um, apart from that, you can obviously check with the police if it is that um, there is an alleged um, incident of domestic violence, certainly doctors and or the victim may have reported it. If there is no police report, then you check back with your source to verify. So the, 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 the moral of the story is, is the more grievous the allegation, the more due diligence or the greater the burden is on the reporter who is going to report. Yeah. But then there's also instances where media houses are... are, are are successful in defending their claim against public yes. officials. Yes. Uh, in what in what instance that media houses can be well will be successful in that in that well, regard? Well, they, they have a few defenses. Well, um, defamation. They are. They are strict defenses in law. And, and so if may, it, maybe, maybe what we can do before, uh, sorry, is just to mm -hmm. recap on, on what really is defamation yeah. and how and, and, and so what just, are the just, principles. I, I know you, you have done this. Yes. I, I saw the episode with Mr. McQuilkin, McQuilkin um, yes. and he, he discussed it in, in length. Indeed. So I would not even try to, to talk my learned friend. But defamation is basically um, disparaging someone's character. You're, you're bringing them down in the eyes of the public at general. Um, and really and truly, it, 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 it causes damage not just to their reputation, but it may affect their families, you know, um, especially if the disparaging words, um, actually words, words hurt, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So especially if the words are, are published. So for example, there is slander, which is what is said, and there is libel, which is what is published, and that goes on social media, it goes, it spirals out of control. You can't control it. And then we have the situation yeah. where um, it can be both because, of course, we have digital media now, yes. right? Or whether or not a publication digitally is, is known as libel or yes. slander. Well, if, if, if I were to say something bad about you now, it would qualify as slander because it's being recorded. Um, so yes, it, it, or slander and libel. So yes, it's said, but it, because it's being recorded, it goes into the realm of libel, which increases the award of damages, if what I am saying is not true. So your tie is beautiful, 
Right. A wonderful tie. <laughs> <laughs> if you have nothing good to say, don't say it at yes. all. <laughs> <laughs> for right, for right, we, we will stick up in right here. I know we were yeah. dealing with the defenses. Um, we will come back to that when we yeah. uh, play some bills, and we'll be right back. You're watching Strictly Legal. Do you think you have what it takes to be a comedian? Fox passenger to come in a taxi with a hundred dollars and don't say nothing. I see driver get takeaway on stretcher for that. WESN is giving you the platform to showcase your comedic skills. What? What? I don't really know how to play guitar. If you think you have jokes, then WESN is the place for you. You know you left the house in your old Bermuda jersey and your match pants, track pants, quite up on the belly of Beyonce. Beyonce was never in cadets, no. Our platform provides a space for creatives to express themselves. And now it's your turn. Oh, how oh, oh, to watch your grandma? With a smile. <laughs> Give us a call, 628-5835. We bring the laughs, you bring the jokes. Hey, you wanna jam? You sure, boy? You want we jam? Bruh. Let me read that script. <clears throat> hey, are they ready for we comedy jam? We taking it live. Come on live with us now. Come join us for special taping of we comedy jam at Kaiser Blues Cafe in February. We bring the laughs, you walk with the drinks money. We Comedy Jam live tapings at Kaito Blues Cafe. Send us your name to get listed. We Comedy Jam only on WSN Content Capital. So we're not jamming then. It may seem like the hardest thing to do right now, but we all need each other to wear a mask, wash our hands, watch our physical distance, and stay at home. We need you safe. Together we can make the difference. Together we can curb the spread of COVID-19. So let's be responsible in our actions. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Cross Society. Mission-based, people-focused, community-driven. And we are back with Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital speaking about responsible journalism and the law. And of course, the lines will be open soon and you can contact us. The lines will be um, posted. The numbers will be posted on the screen. And we are here with Farai Hoof Masai Sai. Uh, Mr. Masai Sai, we yes. were speaking before the break about um, defenses. the defenses uh, in, terms of, in terms of defamation. Yeah, so there, there, there are a few defenses. Um, so not everything... Um, you say will get a defense. So naturally, if you're telling the truth and you can prove it, um, that is a strict defense. Um, you, you, you can disparage someone, but if it is that they have no reputation to disparage, then uh, yeah, yes, you'll be speaking the truth. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so the justification. Um, naturally, the, the, the ones that the media houses use is, is couched in the freedom of the press, which is Reynolds' privilege. It is a privilege. Um, which, which calls on you as a responsible journalist to exercise responsible journalism um, and to report on things that are matters of public interest. Um, and the, the courts allow that because we have a constitution that says we have a freedom of the press. Um, there's also qualified privileges. Um, so qualified privileges would be like things said in a tribunal context or in a, in a court. Um, you, you can't really be sued for defaming someone while under cross-examination. You, 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 <laughs> an attorney might yeah. tell you you're a stranger to the truth, yeah, and you might, yeah. you might respond a certain way and disparage the attorney. The attorney can't just say, all right, start drafting the claim. Yeah. You know, so there are, there are privileges that are afforded. So for example, parliamentary privilege. Um, you can defame someone in parliament. Um, that is an absolute privilege, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that needs to be revisited. But of course, that is just a general principle in common law. Yes, right. but um, mm -hmm. they, they, I, I believe there, ha there is precedent that if you step outside of yes. Parliament and you accept, not even repeat, once you accept what you said in Parliament was true, you can't be sued. 
So you can say it in Parliament, just go repeat it. Yeah, because a lot of times you hear parliamentarians saying, come outside. Come right? outside. Come outside. <laughs> come outside if, if, and, and repeat the same thing. And obviously, you know, you will be rent a lawsuit. <laughs> Correct. Right? Correct. So th those, those are really the defenses in law. Um, with regards to defamation, there are very few. Um, so you have to be careful what you say when you say what you say. But there's a yeah. lot of, I mean, of course, media houses know of this. And there's a lot of sensationalized reporting. Yeah. Right? Um, and we've seen it day in, day out. Yes. And therefore, again, public officials being held to high standard or what is believed to be high standard. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are a society of, of I would say, bacchanal and local parlance, right? Indeed. And confusion and everything is, is, is first to be in the media, in yes. the print media. Um, in, terms of, in terms of award, right, that, mm -hmm. that the aggrieved person gets. Yes. Um, I mean, I know in this case we were discussing um, off air, yeah. um, the award that was granted was very low compared yeah. to other cases. Yeah, so the, the, the highest award that we have seen in our jurisdiction is about a million. Um, that was an attorney who had about 20 years in the bar. Um, he was defamed by uh, another, the opposing attorney's client defamed him outside of court. And he was successful. That, that was a 2018 judgment, Alfred Pierre. I hope I, I don't get him in trouble now, you know, but <laughs> that, that's the highest award in our jurisdiction. Money can be done. Um, the, the, the other high, high awards would be like um, senior politicians, like the prime minister. He would have sued a few times for defamation. Um, media personalities would have sued for defamation as well. Um, I know Gladiator, he would have gotten about 750,000. Um, yeah, the, the former Attorney General, Anand Ram Logan, he would have gotten a, a fair amount as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the awards are usually high. In our circumstances, this particular case, it wasn't, too, it wasn't very high, but um, there is an appeal on the award of damages. So the, the quantum is being appealed on that. Um, and there's also a cross appeal with the other side that they're saying that their defense should have stood. Um, but there's no stay on the matter. On the matter, yeah, so, so it can be discussed. So now, now the, the difficulty a lot of persons may ask, um, in terms of how do courts quantify yes. awards? Because yes. is it that uh, it depends on whether, okay, you're a politician versus if you're just an ordinary citizen yeah. versus if you're just a public figure. Right. So it, it's, a, it's a way in, as, as a lot of um, ingredients. So the ingredients would be, okay, so if my neighbor slanders me over the fence, say you, your boundary crossing my effing boundary and it's a land thief or something, and only me, my neighbor, and my child here, then the slander would not have been broadcasted to everybody, so you would, it would affect the amount of your award. But if it is you slander me on a Facebook Live or Instagram Live or some sort of live, and it obviously it's there for 24 hours, so many people see the live. You see in PEA -E -E right. or whomever it is. Correct. Love. So the longer, <laughs> the far-reaching the, the slander, which will then form into a libel, especially if someone records it and plays it on the, the news and that sort of thing, then it will affect your name and then the court will have to increase the damages. Um, so they give what you call aggravated damages and they give exemplary damages to, to, as a sort of top up to your general damages. So generally for speaking, with regards to defamation, you don't even have to prove loss. You just have to prove that the words are defamation, defamatory. Um, and if it is that the person repeated the words, then you get what you call exemplary damages, especially if you can show that they were malicious with their intent. Yeah, so these, these things um, affect the, the quantum of damages. Your reputation as well, but I don't think there's much difference, and I'm going to say this real tongue-in-cheek, there's yeah. not, not much difference between lawyers and politicians. But <laughs> well, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Many, many of I my colleagues who are politicians, they, well, they, true. they actually have their law degrees in their back pocket. They, <laughs> they don't practice. But, but, but let's separate the professions. Come on. You know, but, but yes. We so, are not liars. No, right? I, I, I say that in the context that... Um, the quantum of damages given to lawyers are usually on the same par, same par. With, with, the, yep. with the doctors and the, the, um, the lawyers, the lawyers that, that may be defamed. All know? right, well, uh, let's, let's open the phone lines and, um, and, and hear what the, the public has to say about whether or not uh, responsible journalism, whether or not uh, journalists should be held to a high standard when it comes to reporting, 623-9378 or 622-9338. Um, and it's interesting that you uh, stated doctors, lawyers, and politicians held to a high standard. What about um, in terms of celebrities? Celebrities as well. Celebrities as well. Um, at the end of the day, they, they are looked up to. Uh, many, of, um, many young children look up to celebrities. So some celebrities, they have pseudonyms. 
So, um, for, for example, the, the, the gladiator, he was once my client. His, his character, the gladiator, we sued for the defamation of the character, not for him personally. Um, his name was um, Ricardo, Welsh. Ricardo Welch, but um, for defaming his character that he said he built up a brand. And so you can, yeah, at the end of the day, many of our celebrities have characters that they, they portray either on radio, on TV, you know, that sort of thing. It's a good thing with you, your character kind of blends into your profession. Profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 but they can defame a TV show. They can, if someone puts up on strictly illegal or some kind of thing like that and they make a pun on the show, um, you can sue for the damages caused to your show and that will fall under the realm of... Um, Defamation. No, of course, it, it doesn't mean that your your show has to be protected by by whether yeah. it is copyright or trademark yeah. or, or whatever right. it is because, because of you these would words. have generated mm. goodwill. Um, congratulations to your show, by the way, on the one year celebration. Thank you, thank you. you know, but thank you would you have you. generated goodwill, and therefore you would have you have protection under passing off if anyone wants to pass off, and especially with the reputation that it has garnered. I've seen the esteemed attorney general on this this stool as well. Yes, that's, uh, a, that's yeah, a famous so, stool. So definitely. Um, you, you, you can't protect your brand. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, 623 um, we're speaking about responsible journalism, uh, uh, defamatory statements. Now, now it's in, in particular, there's a lot of, um, I mean, we've seen where the police commissioner issue um, in terms of uh, the former, the yes, the reporting. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of issues. I mean, there's a lot of things back and forth with respect think, to, yeah, to, he, he was, to he, that. He, he had a gross with the with the leaking of the report. Um, the, the report in itself may have some privilege attached to it if, it, if it's done in an investigative format. Um, and certainly if he was interviewed with regards to the report. So, and, and then obviously they would have defenses such as justification. And justification is basically you thought it was the truth and you did certain due diligence before publishing. But in, that, but in that particular circumstance, um, can, can he actually bring an action before the court uh, with respect to that leak? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> especially, if, especially if you did not have sight of that particular report prior to being leaked to the media. Correct, yes. So he, he can. He can have a, a, a cause of action because um, at the end of the day, it's very disparaging to him. And I suppose his, his attorneys would be advising him of the, the course of action to take. You know? Yeah, yeah and, and, I mean, the, 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 uh, in, in terms of these types of actions, it, it, it's always constant, right? There are a number of actions that are before the court with respect yeah. to um, suing media houses. Yeah. Um, some that are published in the media, some that are not, depend, yeah. depends on your status in society. Correct. Um, now, is it that there are media houses of the belief that, well, I mean, their they, they, they account is limitless in terms of cash or they I, don't I mind think, being sued? I think, I, I, from my experience, I think they take calculated risks. So if a story would sell and for, would sell for the week, they'll take that risk, all right? Because they will probably make millions on the story in terms of the advertising revenues and that sort of thing. And obviously, be this, have this, they like to have the scoop, you know? So I suppose a media house who got the leak on that particular um, report, um, Stanley John report, that is, uh, would publish it, would risk it, you'll risk it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll and, risk and, and that is exclusive. It's um, exclusive. I know it was the one it's, media host who would have published. It's literally, you got the scoop and, and you just run the numbers and you say, what, if we, if we have to pay a 500,000 for defamation, we will pay that. No, can a journalist, I know, I know journalists are, are the ones that are usually um, sued, but can a journalist sue um, a politician, let's say, for instance, I know um, a number of times there are journalists who politicians uh, speak about well, um, if the ill foundedly. If, if they came out of the house, <laughs> so to speak. So the politicians can, can say what they have to say on the floor of parliament um, and be protected 100%. But if they, they come on this show or any other media house um, and they say what they have to say, um, then they have to defend what they have to defend. You know, so. and, 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 and then what about, um, I, I know usually when uh, litigants uh, may bring action against the, the media house, yeah. it's normally the reporter and the media house. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, so, for instance, uh, let's say the, the court um, awards uh, well, liability to the, uh, to the media house Correct. and the journalists, yes. and they are ordered to pay damages. Yes. Is it that the journalist has to now take their monies out of their pockets well, um, well, I, to, I to, to not, pay that amount? I unfortunately, I have not represented the, any media houses, but um, we usually get paid by the media house. Okay, so, so they yeah. would pay on behalf of their employee? Correct. So they, they settle all. The, so the, the, we, we try 
in my profession not to go after men of straw. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> men who don't have money. <laughs> the, the media houses, if, if you have backed your reporter in terms of um, doing your due diligence because you have an editor-in-chief before anything is published, you should stand by your reporter. And, and most, if not all, media houses stand by their reporting. That's good. And, and um, of course, I, I, I know we have the lines open, 623-9376-622-9338. Maybe persons are, are, are scared to call in to report or, 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 probably, <laughs> or probably because of the, 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 the instant topic. We, we don't we want actually, any defamatory statements being made <laughs> and, <laughs> over you know, the we, air. We actually had a, a matter where we did um, a libel on a radio station. And the, the radio station indicated that they had a lag time of five seconds to, to catch defamatory words and you know edit it out before it goes to the outside world um, and the trial judge at the time she, she carol gobin actually she she indicated that five seconds is too short <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't catch the um, defamatory word in time in time yes, right, so right, right. Went yeah, out yeah, five seconds yeah, yeah because yeah. i mean who can actually um uh make that a, a yeah. statement like that, yeah. you know, so, so they, they for had 10 their, seconds. They had their producers on site and that sort of thing, but they said when, by the time they caught it, the five seconds had already gone. Mm -hmm. So she, she asked, she told them 10 seconds maybe. 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. But then how do you, I mean, of course that is subjective. Well, that's a, that, that, that's well, a subjective you, approach. Yeah, well, you, re, you really have to gauge who you bring on your set. Huh? If you know it's um, someone who's prone to defaming public figures, you probably would probably increase that lag time to 30 seconds. Yeah. You know? no, 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 you made an interesting point. And, and sorry, I keep on saying, um, I'm, I'm making an error in terms of the, the numbers. It's 623-9376, Now, in terms of, um, and, I, I noticed that you indicated that you don't sue people who, who basically broke. <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah, so but then, but then these are the people <laughs> that constantly spew um, on factual uh, things on public domain. Yes. And they continuously do that because they know, well, I don't have no assets. So what you, uh, what you would do, as, how an, do you, as an attorney, what you, we normally do is that we get injunctions. So we try to shut down the, the defamatory um, utterances um, from the start. So if we get those interim injunctions pending trial, say the trial is two, three years down the road, at least we'll shut that person up for the duration of it. Um, and certainly when we win, we ask for the injunction to be permanent. All right, so that quiets that person. Um, although they are a person of straw, the client would have to be vindicated that watch. We got the declarations that we asked for. We got the injunctions, at least we got the injunctions from the start. So the, whatever was on Facebook and thing has been removed. Um, and they cannot repeat it because if they repeat it, then they will be in contempt of court. And then um, if they're in contempt uh, of court, the consequences could be custodial committal. committal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's what we do where we realize that watch. We are nothing to get <laughs> out of this except our <laughs> legal fees. So you are just basically doing it because uh, just just because. <laughs> well, I mean, as they are today, you're getting your fees. Yeah, no, well, it, it is important to the client that their name is vindicated huh? mm -hmm. because people see and read defamatory things and, and accept it as facts. Facts, that is true. You know, all the time, um, all the time. So, yeah, so if, if someone says that um, I, I abused my spouse or I abused my children, I, I certainly would have to deal with that because um, naturally it could affect even my, my bread and butter. You know, who would want to go to an attorney for a protection order yeah. if he himself abuses his, his, um, his, his counterpart? So, yeah, yeah you, you definitely, some of these things you just want to cure, cure the damage. Put right. a bandage on it and you press one with your life. Now, now yeah. in terms of, 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 of where do we go from here with this matter, I know that you stated that there's an appeal against um, yeah. cost. Yeah, so there's Sorry, an cost appeal on the both award. sides. Mm -hmm. There's an appeal and a, and a cross appeal, well, counter notice they call it. All right, so the, 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 media, the media house has appealed in terms of saying that their defense should have stood, and we have appealed in terms of saying that the amount awarded was too low. All right, so let's see how yeah. it goes, because, yeah. I mean, of course, you have precedent in terms of other matters where, Indeed. similarly, right, a, a, another politician got a high award. Yes, right? yes, um, yes. I know we were discussing just recently yes, the, yes. Mayor of, the Mayor of Chagonas. The Mayor of Chagonas, um, yes, yes. His matter was in the Court of Appeal against Jack Warner and Sunshine, so he sued both. He sued two. I suppose Jack Warner would have been the man, the man of money, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the man yeah. of means, <laughs> and the media house might have been considered a, a, a relatively... Something that you could go and levy on, yeah. you know, but um, the Court of Appeal would have increased the award he would have gotten in the lower courts. And at the time, he was a counselor in the, 
I do, I believe he's still a councillor. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's still a councillor. He's a mayor. And, and a mayor. He's a mayor yeah. now. He has gotten really yeah. high up. So we, we have we, we are the cutting edge in terms of our precedence and defamation law in Trinidad. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's and it's 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 evolving. It, right. Indeed. And um and I mean we, we have to wrap up here. Any any closing statements um for us? Um, <laughs> I, I just wanna say thank you for inviting me on your set to discuss a contemporary matter. Um and definitely we value your show. Thank you, very value much. To our profession Thank you very and much. To society as well. I appreciate yeah. that. And of course, your feedback is, 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 is accepted. Yeah. And, um, and we, we are just growing from here. Uh, so thank you so much, Farai, for gracing yeah. us once again as our seasoned or almost seasoned guest. <laughs> um, and we will see you another time. Right, so, yeah. so guys, it's a wrap. I hope that um, the information has been fruitful as well as the discussion. You have been watching Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. Of course, you can check, catch the replay on our channels as well as Strictly Legal with Rondell Donova podcast. All right, so see you next time with another interesting topic. I can't wait. Uh, God bless, be safe, sanitize, social distance, take your vaccine. Good day.